Alright, hey guys and girls, what is up today? It's me, Enduro1421, and today I'm making a tutorial video for Flip a Clip. Uh, the main reason why is because one of my friends is using it and they don't really know what to do. And, I mean, Flip a Clip's pretty easy to use, so I thought I'd make a tutorial since I haven't really seen anybody else make one. Then again, I'm not out there on YouTube looking up Flip a Clip tutorials when I already know how to use it, so. Yeah, let's make one of our own. Alright, so your homepage. This is your homepage when you open the app. This is not what yours will look like. This is what mine looks like. Ignore everything. <laughs> You'll have three options at the very bottom called the home, the plus, and the discover. What you're going to do is press the plus one and it makes a new project. You want to name it, so I'm going to name it help because I'm helping you guys. Now, the canvas size isn't really important if you edit videos like I do, but if you're making animations and you're like uploading it through Flip a Clip, which is very complicated and that's why I don't do it, um, you're going to want to select it depending on what you're posting it on. So if you're doing Tumblr, Facebook, Venmo, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, there's different sizes. But I'm leaving it as this, because that's what I always use. I've never changed it, and I probably never will. <laughs> now, as for the frames per second, again, that's only really for if you're actually doing animation. Which, by the way, is this what this is app, you, this app, I can't speak English, is what this app is used for. So, yeah. I don't really use it for animation. <laughs> I use it to draw, but that's okay. I'm going to go with one for my frames per second. However, though, if you're doing, like, other stuff, you probably want to make it a little bit higher, because if not, it's going to look like that. So, that's all you need to do. You want to hit Create Project. Now, you're going to be greeted with this. There are a lot of tools in here, so this is going to be a very long tutorial. So, try to stick around. Um... I don't know how to do that like little section splitter up or because I've seen on some YouTube videos it's like at 0.5 seconds uh, this is the beginning of the tutorial and stuff. I don't know how to do that so I'll just not do that. <laughs> okay, um, just skip ahead where you feel like is correct. So we're going to go over the first five tools, the main five which is the pen tool, the eraser tool, the selector tool, the fill tool, and the text tool. <laughs> I'm choking on my own spit. <clears throat> Don't mind me. All right, I'm back after I choked on my own spit. We're back, okay, I didn't die. Good, so the pen tool, it lets you draw stuff. The eraser tool, it lets you erase stuff. I will also show you how to edit these to make them better. The selector tool, it allows you to select stuff and move it. It even lets you copy and paste, which I'll show you later on. The fill bucket, it fills it. The text tool, it texts. Yes, very self-explanatory for those last two. All right, let's make a new layer. Or layer, not, not new layer, new frame, that's what it's called. So down here at the bottom, where this monstrosity is, there's a little plus one. You press that, and boom, you get a new one. I already got one part of the tutorial out of the way. All right. So, for the pen tool, we're going to go over them one by one. So the pen tool, you want to press on it. For everything that you want to open, you just press on it in order to get in there. So you can change the size to big or small. I always go for a three point one, and also by the way, in order to do it, you have to like touch it and then drag it, so up or down, depending on the size. And the reason why I use a three point one is because it looks like this, so when you draw it's really nice and stuff. I mean, you can use whatever size, I'm not, I'm not saying, it's just recommended for me I use the three. Anyway, the color, you press the black square and it pops up the color wheel. Ignore the color palettes, they're for me, not for you. And um, you basically just go around the color wheel by dragging it in order to select your color. So I'm going to use blue because blue is a nice color. It shows up well and it's just nice all around. Now you can also do uh, different shades. So if you want a light blue, you drag it over there. If you want a dark blue, you drag it down. You get what I'm trying to say. If you know how to use a color wheel. 
very easy. <laughs> so, you just draw and boom, it's a blue drawing now. Alright, next up is going to be the eraser tool. So when you have it, like when you create a new project, it will always start you out with this, which I hate it because I always have to go back in and change it. But in order to get an eraser tool that's not going to basically have, oh, no, let me change this, is not going to have you like do a fade kind of thing, which I'll show you what I mean. See how that fades? If you want to fix it, you got to just drag it down to where it's zero and boom. Now it's empty. And you can change the size. You can make a big eraser, small eraser, any size. I, I, depending on what I'm drawing, I use big or like medium. So like right there, depends on my drawing. But I usually use big because I make big mistakes. Someone put in a drum roll, please. Anyway, not drum roll, but I'm okay. Whatever. <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked. All right. So let's say that you're trying to draw something, right? Let's say you draw a really good eye and the other one's bad on your face. Well, you use your big eraser, or your small one. I'm using big because, you know. And then you use the selector tool. You select this by just circling around with your finger. And then the copy and paste tool is above it. So above the eraser, there's the little two squares. That's the copy one. The paste one is right next to it, it's the two full squares, and then you can just ma move it. There's also another cool thing. So down here above the um, frames and stuff, not the play button, but these ones up here, there's a trash can and two of these. These ones basically just flip it back and forth, and these ones flip it upside down. Sometimes for some reason it glitches for me and flips... Um, the upside down one is actually flipping it left to right, and the left to right flips it upside down. I don't know, but that's that. All right, the fill tool, the easiest one here. You press the square, you select your color, and boom, you just press it. Yeah, that's really, that, it's easy. <laughs> that's the easiest one. Okay, also, actually, before I move on to the text, let's say that you're coloring the head, right? Let's say you, you're that's not good. Let's say you're drawing like something. Actually, I'm gonna move this down. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you're drawing a circle, right? But let's say that you don't connect it up all the way, like that, like by a singular pixel. It's not, you know, connected. Well then, all you, if you press this, it's not gonna, you know, fill the entire thing. It's gonna fill the whole box. But that's not what you want, unless that is what you want. Then do, go ahead and do it. But if you want to fill the circle, you have to make sure all the lines are connected. Alright, next one is the text tool. So the text tool, very easy to use. You press it, um, there's so many text uh, fonts, that's what they're called. You basically press which one you want. In order to make the size bigger, you just drag this up. I'm going to use 93 because it's a good one. You can insert the text, type whatever you want. And if you want to change the color, Boom! That's how you do it. You can have blue, you can have green, whatever you want. You can have different fades. I'd say it's pretty cool. So that's all the tools completed. We're moving on to the next part of the tutorial. Let's show you how to like do layers and how to copy and paste frames and do it on a multitude and whatnot. So right now you have two frames or one frame depending on how you're doing this. Well, Let's say that you want to copy this frame right here because you think it's really awesome or you just need like another one. Like if you're doing animation and you're like that's one of the faces you need and it just like continues to do it. So it's like that, you know. You can copy this by holding it down and then pressing the copy button and then pressing this button on the very far right, or my right, should I say? It's this one. Actually, it should be your right, too. <clears throat> but anyway, you press it, and boom, now you have two of them. Or, let's say you don't want to do it like that, and let's say that you want to take this one, copy it, and then you press this one on the very far left, and now you have two of those, but it went backwards instead of forward. You can do that with anything. Or, if you just want to delete it, you can do that. 
or if you want to add in a brand new frame but you don't feel like pressing the very easy square and you want to be more complicated, you can press this one or you can press that one, depending on if you want it to be forward or backwards. That's not the button I wanted to press, ignore that. Alright, so now you've got that down. You understand that? Yes. You can also pause or slow down at any time if I'm going too fast. Alright, well now we're going to go a little bit faster and we're going to move on to the top tools above the normal five. So the first one is called the ruler tool. Basically, it's self-explanatory. You want to select whatever pin you have and basically make either a straight line, a circle, or a square. That's also how I get my perfect circle heads, is that circle tool. Alright, also another thing I forgot to mention for this, the pen, there's also different options. So you click it, and then you click this, and there's three other options. You have the pencil, which looks like that. You can change the color. The um, paintbrush, which depending on if you have it on like fill one or fill 100, it'll look differently. And then the highlight tool, which is a highlighter. I never use the highlight tool or the paintbrush. I always use either the pencil or the pen. I use the pen to do outlines and I use like the pencil to do glowing eyes and stuff. All right, so now that you've got that down, basically what you're gonna need to do next is, let's say you messed up somewhere. Well, there's the undo and redo button, which are the two little arrows that curve. The undo button is right here the one that curves to the left, and then the redo button is the one that curves to the right. And let's say that you're zooming in in order to get some really good details on your face, like this. Well, instead of just pinching to zoom back out, or pinching to zoom back in, or, no, it would be out because this is the thing. So anyway, what you want to do is these two little stretchy lines up here. You press them and it, boom, it takes you back. So, yeah, that's how you do that. Alright, so down here at the very bottom above the frames like this, you have the option to play, which is only used for like animations and stuff, that's what you use to like start it. Sorry, I had to cut the video, there was an ad anyway, so um, basically what I was saying is this right down here, it's like for the frames per second, that's what it's called. Uh, you just want to, if you are doing an animation, depending on how fast you want it, you're going to select whatever the frames per second is, and it'll play it at that frames per second. So like, if you have 12 frames per second, if you make 12 frames, that's one second. You should know that if you're doing animations. So the next one is the layer tool. So let's say that you want to give this guy a really nice hairdo, right? Well, instead of drawing on this layer, so that way you have to erase this instead of like having to fill- I did not connect it, I did the one rule I said you have to do. Instead of having to erase that in order to fill the whole thing, you want to go to these um, little things right up here, these ones that are turning gray because I'm holding down on it. You just have to press it and then it'll pop this up. Now, unless if you buy more frames, you can only go up to three. So I would go on to layer tool, t tool, two layer two and draw his hair so or her hair it could be a girl I'm just making it a guy because why not I draw better guy hair and that's what he looks like <laughs> now beautiful all right so now that you've got that down um, you can go back to this there's only a few more things to show so let's say you want to add in your own audio or you want to add in like you know, your own audio or something Basically, you would go over to this, the little, there's like a little music thing. You press it, and then you can like add your audio in here. And I use uh, Google Drive to basically record whatever I want for my audio, download it onto the Google Drive, wait for it to actually upload, and then wait for it to work on here, and that's how I get it. Now let's say that you accidentally pressed it and you don't want to do audio or you want to get out of it. You just press the little down arrow. That's it. Alright, and then the last but not least few things are 
the grid, the onion, the editing, the tools, and copying, pasting, and deleting stuff on a multitude. So at the very top again, there's the three little dots, you press it, and you get this thing. The make movie is only if you're finally completed or if you just want to make something already. For the project settings, we're going to go down by one. So this is basically how you edit it. You can edit the frames per second, so if you want to do that. I'm still leaving it on, actually I'm going to do two, just so I can show you. So when you do, that was originally like a faded red. When you do, you have to press save changes or else it's not going to do it correctly. You want to go back in the frames viewer. This is how you copy and paste or delete on a multitude. So you want to hold. That's not how you do it. You want to hold down whatever you want to do, and then you can select them, and you can copy them. You can paste them. You can delete them. You can add in new frames. You know, all that great stuff. The last two tools or three tools are the onion layer and the grid. So for the onion layer, let's say that you used like a reference to draw a hand because you're not good at drawing hands. Totally couldn't relate. I'm perfect at drawing hands. You would select the onion layer and you can basically see everything that's on this layer but on the next one, that on the next one. So you can draw over it or whatever. And you just, it's like a switch. You just press it on and off. Same thing with the grid. Except it does that. I never use the grid, but if you want to, you can. The add image is pretty self-explanatory. You press it, and then you can only select up to one image per each like time you select one. So like, let's say you select a picture of a dog, you have to upload the picture, and then you have to go back and select another picture, etc, etc. And then the add video, I never use it, but it's basically the exact same thing as the photo, just with a video. And that is everything. In order to get out of here, you basically just press the back arrow. And you're done. That's it.